at this point in time when you were uh, playing with the Sunbirds, you weren't yet really thinking, um, okay, this is going to be maybe my professional life. Uh, and um, it was at a concert when the manager of Joan Armor Trading, and I mean, Joan Armor Trading is an amazing musician. Um, yeah. And can you explain what happened in that situation? You were, you know, having a concert, and then this guy walks up to you and says, hello, my name is, and what happened then? Yeah, so actually, that band that we just saw the pictures of, we'd actually split up at that time. So I just finished university, this band who were really good had split up. And suddenly I was like, Oh, my God, what do I do now? You know, I have to get a real job, maybe and this kind of thing. So I was kind of like in a time of uncertainty. Uh, and I was starting to play more concerts on my own, just me and my acoustic guitar solo. And uh, I did this one concert. And like you say, um, the manager of Joan Armour Trading came up to me afterwards and said, you know, I really like your stuff. He was a guy from America called Blair. I can't remember his, uh, his second name, but his name was first name was Blair. And he said, I really like your stuff. And, and I'm, I'm sure you know what this is like, Don, and I'm sure lots of uh, creative people know what this is like. You, you get lots of compliments along the way, and it's always lovely. But you learn to not always, uh, you know, you learn to kind of uh, not always believe everything everyone says if they tell you they can do something for you because you don't want to get your heart broken again and again, you know. So uh, he said, you know, maybe we can do something in the future. And he told me that he managed Joan Baez and Joan Armour Trading and some other people like Natalie Merchant. And I thought, wow, well, that's really cool. He's such a nice guy and I'm so glad he liked my music. But I didn't really think too much about it because I didn't want to be disappointed, you know. Um, but yeah, as, you know, two or three months later, I got a phone call asking me, you know, would you like to come and do this tour with Joe and Armour Trading? You know, we'll, 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 we'll pay for you to come out with us. And all you have to do is, uh, you know, take your car and, you know, join us at the concerts and you can be the opening act, the support act. So, yeah, we started off in Holland. We did two nights at the Paradiso and then we played all over Germany. My first, my first ever times to play outside England and it was it was incredible playing in front of 3,000, 4,000 people every night, all strangers. It was it was an incredible experience. And it always I just remember I had the best experience in Germany. I love the audiences there right from that very start. And yeah, it's been good for me, Germany. We have we have a, a couple of pictures that we'd like to show uh, from that time. We're talking we're talking the year 2007, and we'll we're, yeah. we'll see you right here now, right next to a poster, uh, Joan Armour Trading, and that's Dan Raza in the year 2007, and above it, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know what a coincidence, Bob Dylan, I think it is, isn't it? There you go. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I mean that, that that that's the perfect place to be, and you were already playing at that yeah. point in time. That must be in Germany, wasn't that? That is in Germany. Yeah, yeah. I think this is Mannheim. I can see on the poster. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, we were playing the Capital by the look of it. Capital of Mannheim. I don't know. It was a big venue. I remember that. Wow. And we have another picture of you on stage during this join armor trading time uh, as an opening act. I mean, what was it like for you, you know, to step in front of a crowd? I mean, that I, I'm sure it's scary for any musician, but, you know, uh, the, the stage is huge. And then you, you walk yeah. on it. And what happens? Uh, it's crazy, Don. You're right, man. I mean, I think that picture was from the Paradiso in Amsterdam. And I did uh, two nights there. Um, it was crazy, you know, because I'd gone from playing, you know, small pubs and, you know, s small clubs uh, in England to, you know, to suddenly play in these huge theatres and uh, arenas with Joan. And uh, it was scary. And at first I was very nervous and, you know, I couldn't open my eyes and stuff. But as it went along, as it went along, I just, you know, I loved it. The audiences were, were so supportive to me and, you know, they listened, they bought CDs after, afterwards. And for me, it was my first taste of, wow, this is what it's like to be, you know, a real musician doing this. It was wonderful, man. It was. Did you think at that point in time, okay, you know, the first step is made, now it's the only way is up, or you seem to be a very down-to-earth person, knowing, okay, 
this was this is good, but you know it might not be this way tomorrow. What 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 kind of person are you? Well, at that time, you know, my career did go like, you know, it was it was all uphill very quick. Uh, like I say, going from one day playing pubs to the next month playing these huge theaters, and yeah, I did start to have maybe an expectation that you know things would be very easy for me, and you know things would always continue to keep rising quickly so but you know it's not like that sometimes the road isn't always you know direct and straight up so yeah back to earth dan raz i you know had his first taste of um, a fame at that point in time yeah. um and then uh, i'm not exactly how to you know uh, I, i i know that you were, were the band dan raza and the shrouds Uh, mm -hmm. And maybe we could play a bit of that because there you're back in the pubs and the atmosphere is great. Mm -hmm. uh, and the good part about it is you're back with a band. So you have other people to talk to and, you know, travel with and enjoy life with and uh, the music. Uh, we'll just play a bit of that and we'll talk about your time with the Shrouds, okay? Thanks. Off we go. <laughs> Obviously, and I just wanted to capture, you know, this live feeling. It sounds great, and it's a mixture. You know, I was always going, you know, it's uh, Dan. Obviously, sings better than Bob Dylan does, um, and you know, there's 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 a bit of Bruce Springsteen and, and and a lot of other, you know, great artists mixed. But it's still something very, very Dan Raza style, which which kind of fascinates me. How do you do it? Wow! How do you do it? Thank you, man. <laughs> Uh, I listen to a lot of music, that's for sure, man. And just always, you know, I'm not one of these people who stops listening and finding new music and thought, I'm just still in love with it. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Yeah, I've got a beautiful tour manager in Germany, a lady called Goody B, who uh, sorts all my tours out now. And, you know, every time I go to her place, uh, I'm always picking new CDs off the shelves saying, you know, what's this sound like? What's this sound like? I've just never lost that curiosity and passion for music you know and i think that that is one secret if if, if you can call it a, a secret you know i just I, i'm just still in love love with it it's still my baby you know and i'm just still i just it never stops for me being fascinating you know to find new ways to express myself and new sounds and new colors and I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, just, I, I still just, I'm still in love with it. I'm still drunk on music. I hope, and I don't think that that will ever change because if it, if it hasn't changed up to now, it probably never will. And, and yeah. isn't it fascinating, you know, that, you know, the same few notes uh, can create all this different kind of beautiful music. I mean, that's magic. That's magic. Yes. Totally agree, Don. Do you, do you play music, Don? Um, yes, I do, and and I've com composed music, and uh, I've uh, always dreamed a bit to be uh, a, a pop or rock star, but I never was, you know, even anywhere close to, you know, where you are. So that's why, you know, my respect is high, uh, and and you know, very honest. Um, um, and when I see, you know, that you have, uh, we're, we're showing you know, pictures of your CD. We have uh, two pictures there. You know, I can imagine this probably was your first CD in the store on sale yeah. was what was what, what, what was that kind of a feeling oh it was incredible man because um i, I you know a lot of, uh, this record store in fact just closed down now in, in england it was a 
the biggest one, it was called HMV. Uh, and it was a very old record shop, you know, the most uh, respected record shop. So for me to have my own, you know, name, Dan Raza, and CDs in that shop, because I spent so much time in there as a kid, so much time, you know, trying to, you know, I had a little bit of pocket money every month or whatever, and to go in this this same shop and to see my own CD in there, it was wow! It was a dream, man. 